There were a lot of barriers to successful passing games in the 1970s. And some of them kept receivers out of service for quite some time. Like MacArthur Lane of the Packers in this 1974 Week 10 game. Jack Snow in this 1973 Week 12 tilt at Soldier Field in Chicago. This trench was built so that fans in the lowest seats could see the action on the field more clearly. The purpose of this video is to shed light on the merits of quarterback John Hadle for inclusion into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. After the video, please add a comment as to whether you think he should be a Hall of Famer. Let's get after it. Another barrier to a successful passing game is getting your future Hall of Fame wide receiver Lance Allworth kicked out of games for retaliation of number 31's Fletcher Smith's cheap shot tactics. Of course, the referee didn't see Smith's sneak attack and kick him out. Check out these playing conditions. Think they may have cut down on pass completion percentages? In all fairness, Hadel played in sunny Southern California for 13 years with the Chargers and Rams, so the weather for home games was ripe for success. After spending two years playing in the frozen tundra of Green Bay, he found the Astrodome's atmosphere much to his liking, as well as that of Billy White Shoes Johnson. In 1960 and 1961, Hadel was an All-American as a running back and quarterback. To further demonstrate his skills, he led the NCAA with a 45.6 yards per punt in 1959. In 1962, the Lions selected Hadel as the 10th overall draft choice, while the Chargers selected him in the third round of the AFL draft. The Lions traded for quarterback Milt Plum prior to the 1962 season, and he was a Pro Bowl player in both 1960 and 1961, so Hadel probably thought he had a better shot at starting in San Diego, even though Jack Kemp was also a Pro Bowl quarterback in 1961.
Whittle had immediate success playing for the Chargers, as he played in the 1963 AFL Championship game in which they defeated the Boston Patriots 51-10. He threw for one touchdown and ran for another. He also played in the 1964 AFL Championship game that the Chargers lost to the Bills 20-7, and he started in the 1965 AFL Championship game in which the Chargers lost to the Bills again, this time 23-0. Whittle's accomplishments include six Pro Bowl appearances, one first-team All-Pro designation, one second-team All-Pro designation, and the 1973 NFC Player of the Year Award. He finished in second place in his league's MVP voting once, third place once, and fourth place once. He's a three-time passing yards leader, three times yards per catch leader, which means that he threw a lot of deep balls. He's a two-time passing touchdown leader and two-time sack percentage leader, which means that he was wise with the ball in hand. In the following categories, passing yards, passing touchdowns, passer rating, and completion percentage, he finished in the top three in his entire league 19 times. He had 10 straight 2,000-yard passing seasons when 2,000 yards was a big achievement. He had three seasons of 3,000-plus passing yards in 1967, 1968, and 1971. At that time, only Sonny Jurgensen had more, five seasons. Hadel's 3,473 passing yards in 1968 was the fifth most all-time until 1979 when Dan Fouts passed for more yards in a 16-game schedule, two more games than Hadel. Is this beginning to sound like a Hall of Famer? Don't answer that, not quite yet anyway, because there's more. At Hadel's retirement, he was third all-time in passing yards with 33,503, fourth all-time in touchdown passes with 244, and sixth all-time in wins with 82 as a quarterback. If there was a quarterback today who finished with those rankings at retirement, most everyone would refer to him as a certain future Hall of Famer. ProFootball.com's top 10 most similar quarterbacks to John Hadle include five Hall of Famers, who are Terry Bradshaw, the number one most similar quarterback, Bob Greasy, Warren Moon, Jim Kelly, and Joe Montana. Eli Manning is ranked as the third most similar, and he is ineligible for induction at the time that this video was made. So Hadle was a winner, had a Hall of Fame wide receiver, put up outstanding statistics, and had plenty of accolades. What more do you want? Rams fans were getting restless. In 1972, Rams quarterback Roman Gabriel's knee and shoulder injury problems deteriorated, so they traded defensive end Coy Bacon and running back Bob Thomas to the Chargers for Hadel on January 
In the 1974 Week 5 loss to the Packers, Hadle was 6 of 16 passing for only 59 yards, 2 interceptions, and 2 sacks. He was benched in the third quarter for James Harris, and 9 days later he was traded to the Packers. The quarterback that the Packers really wanted was Archie Manning. He had a rough start in 1974, and Green Bay and New Orleans agreed in principle for Green Bay to send two number ones, and two number two draft choices for Manning. But fate intervened. Manning was benched in week six for Bobby Scott, but Scott injured his knee against Atlanta in week six, and backup quarterback Larry Saipa, a 1974 15th round draft pick, was only one of seven passing in relief. So Archie got his starting job back in week seven, and the proposed trade was called off. But Manning came very close to becoming a Green Bay Packer. Packers were even more desperate for a quarterback now, and they upped the ante. They traded their 1975 first, second, and third round picks, along with 1976 first and second round draft picks for Hadel. Notable players that the Rams selected with those draft picks were defensive tackle Mike Fanning, who played eight years with the Rams, defensive back Monty Jackson, who had two All-Pro seasons with the Rams, and defensive back Pat Thomas, who intercepted 26 passes in seven years with the Rams. <laughs> the Packers panicked and paid too much for Hadel, who won, played terrible against them just nine days prior to the trade, two, was long in the tooth at age 34, three, his 46.1 completion percentage for the Rams in 1974 was his worst since his 1963 season. And four, he only averaged 136 passing yards in his five starts in 1974 with only five touchdown passes and six interceptions.
distinguishing attribute of a Hall of Fame quarterback is making the players around him better. In Hadel's case, he helped to make wide receiver Lance Allworth a Hall of Famer. During Allworth's prime of his career, 1962 through 1970, he played with Hadel as his quarterback, and all he did was lead his league three times in receptions, three times in receiving yards, three times in receiving touchdowns, and he had seven straight 1,000-plus receiving yard seasons. Who threw all these passes to the Hall of Famer Allworth? Hadel did, and that should merit special consideration for his inclusion in the Hall of Fame, too. Hadel didn't come close to producing for the Packers as they had hoped, so after throwing only six touchdowns with 21 interceptions, they traded him to the Oilers along with defensive back Ken Ellis and two draft picks for quarterback Lynn Dickey. (laughs) 